Good day for another episode of Bible in a Year. This is day number 63. Deuteronomy chapter 14 through 16 is the readings for day 63. And uh, I just want to focus on chapter 14 and just to kind of remind everybody about a special importance of understanding the difference between the church and the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is a collective body of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were a physical people. They were given physical uh, promises, uh, physical land, um, physical blessings, wealth and health, prosperity. Uh, the church yet is different. The church is not based upon a physical genealogy. Uh, by the way, in that corporate body of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, otherwise known as the Jews or nation of Israel, each one had to have their own personal relationship. Because you were born a Jew, did not make you uh, saved. You had to have your own personal relationship with the Lord God, Jehovah. So anyway, uh, people many times confuse in churches. They have attributed the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the church. And you can't do that. There is a difference. In 1 Corinthians 10, 32, the Bible says, "Neither Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God. It's important to understand today that there's three groups in the Bible. One is Jew, the other is Gentile. So in the physical sense, everybody on this earth in God's eyes is either Jew or Gentile. If you're not born from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you're a Gentile. But interestingly, when you get saved, you're neither, now today as the church, you're neither Jew nor Gentile. You are now the church of God. You are the church of God. It's interesting as we study the New Testament, we find most of the blessings and promises, not that God would not provide material things. We're told to pray for food and daily bread and so forth, but most of the blessings are spiritual blessings. They're not physical blessings. Our inheritance is a, phys a spiritual inheritance. So when you read through these chapters and you read the dietary laws like in chapter 14, you got to keep that in mind. God did not command us as believers. He did not restrict us in our diet at all. To the people of God, they had restrictions. They could not eat certain things. They could not, um, they had to, their clothing was different. They couldn't use mixed materials. Um, there's so many different things as we study through um, as you look through these chapters in here. So it's important to understand that and understand, of course, we're not even required to, to follow the Sabbath. Um, Sabbath was the seventh day. It was given to the Jews. It was given on, in the book of Nehemiah tells us it was given to the nation of Israel um, when they were there at Mount Sinai. Um, some people say, well, what about when God created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh? Did he institute the Sabbath? No, he didn't. He did it. What God did was he rested to look at his wonderful creation. But it wasn't instituted until Sinai. So churches, again, must understand that difference. And if you don't, some churches believe in replacement theology, covenant theology in the sense that they believe that God's done with the nation of Israel, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they believe the churches now uh, receive those same promises. No, we have not. We are a unique entity. God's not done. Romans 9, 10, and 11 speak of God's future fulfillment for the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, so again, we've got to keep this separation. We've got to make sure that we understand that difference. And if we don't, we will be all confused. And uh, we will really get a lot of false teaching and doctrine because of that. But anyway, just thought I'd share that about chapter 14. Um, on the 63rd day of your Bible in a year program. Till we meet again, God bless you.